Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of the Snowflake Data Cloud Summit here at the Moscone Center in San Francisco, California. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, sitting alongside my co-host, co-analyst, co-founder of theCUBE, Dave Vellante. Dave, we've just had lunch. I could go for a Coca-Cola. Well. <laughs> I, I love to have repeat guests on, especially ones that bring customers. <laughs> and, you know? Well, indeed. And, Which and, you do every time. And yeah. speaking of Coca-Cola, I'd like to introduce uh, Cube alum, Matthew Scullion. He is the founder and CEO of Matillion. Welcome, Math Welcome back, Matthew. Thank you so much for having me, Rebecca. Yeah, Cube alum, I'm, I'm beginning from, uh, wondering if I'm outstaying my welcome. This has got to be my fifth, sixth time on oh, this. You're a so, Cube veteran, I should yeah, say. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Indeed. Thank you for having us today. And yeah. Jeremy Post, Manager of Business Intelligence at Coca-Cola Consolidated. Welcome. Thank you, I'm glad you had me today. I'm happy to be here. Well, we're excited to hear about, about your experiences, but, but Matthew, let's start with you. Talk a little bit about Matillion and what you're doing here at the, the Snowflake Summit. Well, Snowflake Summit, one of the most important tent pole events of the year for Matillion. Snowflake, uh, incredibly important partner to our company, but jointly together, uh, we're, we help our customers, like Jeremy at Coca-Cola Consolidated, um, uh, accelerate their time to value with data. Um, Matillion's platform, the Data Productivity Cloud, is designed to wildly increase the productivity of data engineering teams. And uh, it's an important problem. No one has all the data that they need. 70% of the work of making a data use case come to life is data engineering. The only real way you can square the circle is to make an individual data engineer or data engineering team wildly more productive, or to get more players on the pitch by changing the skills profile required to do data engineering, and those are the two things that our platform's designed to do. This year, though, I think uh, a particularly important year in our industry and at this particular Snowflake Summit, uh, we've been really excited to announce our next big swath of generative AI pipeline building functionality on the data productivity cloud, support for Snowflake Cortex, uh, for the um, Arctic uh, 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 large language model, um, and uh, for Snowflake container services as well, meaning that as customers build out uh, data and gen AI pipelines on data productivity cloud, they can run them using Cortex functionality and on Snowflake containers. So super exciting, really important event for us. Thrilled to be here, particularly joined by many of our customers, including Jeremy. You always bring the customers. We love that on theCUBE. And yeah, the container service is interesting. Announced, I guess, a couple years ago, a big one last year. But now we're seeing a lot of the NVIDIA innovations get in. We saw, we've seen Nemo, we see NIMS. Jeremy, tell us about your role at Coca-Cola. What's your data journey been like? When did you? You know, find out about Snowflake and start adopting it and, and bring in uh, Matillion. Well, I got started in BI, as most people do, as a truck driver. Um, <laughs> as we know, you know, everybody gets started Stand in BI in as a truck path. driver, yeah. right? Be quiet. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's, it's, a, it's a required skill set. Um, and Coca-Cola Consolidated presented kind of a very unique situation where they had a private fleet of trucks, like a lot of companies do, and they recognized that they were taking stuff from their plants and their uh, manufacturing facilities and delivering it to distribution centers. And then they were coming back empty, which is very expensive for any trucking company. So the, the thing that they identified as a way to turn a cost center into a profit center. And so they spun that private fleet off into a, uh, a for hire trucking company so that now that Coke is the largest customer of Red Classic and they're also the owner of Red Classic, but now Red Classic is free to go out and broker other freight and go pick up other freight and bring it back. And so it was a whole separate company. And I was brought in uh, to do uh, business intelligence and data analytics with them. And they kind of got their own fate for a long time. And so they needed an, an ETL solution that would help them with a very small number of people. We didn't have the same level of people there. We only had a few people in IT and a few people in BI. And we needed a solution that would allow us to work with it effectively and quickly to get things standing up. That you know you don't need 20 people and you don't need highly technical people to do it because there's there's a component for that really for everything. And so it allows somebody like me with not a huge technical background 
to come in and do work. And, and if a crusty old truck driver can do this stuff, you know, just about anybody can, given just a little bit of effort. Jeremy, I, 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 I don't think we should accept for a moment the crusty old truck driver <laughs> comment there, but it's such a brilliant story because you know, it, it's a micro example of the macro problem. The reason we don't all have the data that we need is because there aren't enough data engineers to do all the work. And, uh, you know, I, I think, as was mentioning a couple of minutes ago, um, here at the summit, a lot of the talk is about the next vanguard of data uh, innovation around generative AI and building the pipelines that our businesses all need. There, the problem is even more urgent and even more acute. There is even fewer people that can build out these sophisticated Gen AI pipelines. So it, it's wonderful to hear Jeremy's story and, and hear an example of how we can take people with the business domain expertise and turn them into highly productive data engineering teams. And I think that's what we've managed to do together. Yeah, and I think democratization of data is, is where the future is, and it's only going to become more pronounced when there are fewer and fewer technical people trying to do those things, and I think that the people that accept that and try to influence that change are the ones that are going to be successful, and the people that can work, and the companies that can work with those folks that are less technical are going to be successful, because democratization is going to steamroll you. It's happening. You know, I was at around 20 years ago when we were trying to, to keep that from happening and keep that data there, and it's, it's Pandora's box, it's out now, and everybody sees the value in data and the value in AI, even though it's still in its infancy, all the power of the things you can do with it. It's quite an amazing career story. So, so many of us, we see the world, you have, the data is plentiful, but insights are lacking. So, can you take us through how you've used some of that data, turned it into insights, and what's it, what it's done for your business? Yeah, so, I've worked for three different trucking companies over my career in about 15 years. And one thing they all had in common is they didn't have a really good handle on where all their equipment was. Um, tractors are a little bit easier to track because they've traditionally had GPS on them or satellite communications, and they have a driver that's actually communicating the location. But with trailers, they didn't have that, right? We have trailer tracking providers, but you might be um, interested to know that at least the first two truck trucking companies I worked for put bounties out because they lost trailers all the time because these things go and they sit and nobody knows where they're at. And one of the big challenges that I was presented with is we have three uh, companies. We have our own company trailers and we have two leasing companies that we lease from. And we didn't know where all of those are. And they all had different tracking providers. In fact, one of the companies had two different tracking providers. So now I'm presented with, I've got to do four different API calls just to get my locations and then another three API or four API calls to get what's the active equipment, and then another one to find out where our landmarks at so we can tell where our trailers were. And I used Matillion to do all of that by myself. It was one person working on this. Uh, my team started with it, and then the, the plan kind of morphed, and I ended up having to take it across the finish line myself. Um, my team did a wonderful job, so don't let me take all that credit. But uh, you know, if, without Matillion, if I'd had to do a lot of the heavy lifting myself, it would have been very difficult for me. Um, and so that's what it provided me, just an, an ability to do that. And now we know where our trailers are, how long they've been there, are they at a landmark, how many do we have, and, and how many do we need there, and where do we need to move them from. And then, and then you can utilize them, which yes, you couldn't yes. before. Yeah, we can turn them in if we're leasing them and they're not being used. Uh, we can talk to our customers and say, hey, we've had a trailer that sat there for two years. Are you using it for storage? Do we need to unload it and get freight loaded on and get it moving? Or, hey, we need to service these things. Where are they at so we can get them in for service? There's just a lot of different reasons why we needed that data and why it's so important to us. Can you describe the old way versus new way? In other words, you said, if I didn't have Matillion, I would have had to do this, I couldn't have done it myself, or you would have had to bring in a team. Let's assume you could have found the people. What would you have had to do that you, it, it, that you didn't have to do with Matillion? Can you compare and contrast? Yeah, so you know, 10, 12 years ago, it would have been, you talk to a developer and they develop a custom solution, maybe in JavaScript or C Sharp or some other application's language to move that data around, and it would kind of be an ad hoc case by case basis. Right, I can just build an orchestration out, Matillion, and then I say, that's the way I want to do it every time, and just copy and paste, and copy and paste. You know, because that's where all good developers get everything from, is Stack Overflow and ChatGPT. I'm just, I'm just copying and pasting. I've never had an original idea, 
right? I just find something that I've got a problem and I find something that someone else does and I try to implement that. But, you know, Matillion gave me a way where I could just go in and I could see these orchestrations visually and I could work in what I was comfortable with. So I've been working in SQL for 10 or 12 years now and I'm really, really good with that. And so there's a lot of applications out there that maybe wouldn't fit me because they aren't SQL heavy. But Matillion has, you look at stuff I build in Matillion and it's all these SQL components. It's just one after the other because that's what I'm comfortable in. But if I go into Matillion and I'm a Python developer, I can do that. Um, you know, I know how to laterally flatten JSON and unstructured data, but it's very tedious. Well, there's a component I can just pull over and say, I don't have to do that. I'm just going to pull it over here and let Matillion do the work for me. So it takes out hours of work that way when you can just drag a component over, change a few settings, and you have your data. And not particularly interesting work, too. I mean, it's yeah. really taking away the toil, the scut work. Yeah, uh, yeah. Rebecca, that's the thing. I mean, Jeremy, that's such an amazing story, thank you. But also, the only thing I'd very respectfully slightly disagree with you about, nervously, because Jeremy's my customer, <laughs> is I don't think it's 10 to 12 years ago, right? So, <laughs> um, uh, so yeah. we heard Sridhar right. from Sometimes. Snowflake yep. talking about Snowflake's vision for enterprise data management at the keynote, whenever that was, day before yesterday, <laughs> I think. Times has a funny quality <laughs> at this event. But you know, the key messages that Snowflake were putting forward, extremely compatible with how Matillion thinks about the world, is around the simplicity, around the single platform, you know, the, secu the security and compliance and stability, the basic idea that we want to turn up at Snowflake or in fact on Matillion and just get on with making our businesses better. Now that contrasts Snowflake from other cloud data platform providers and other technologies where it's a bit more assemble your own open source and, and uh, I think of it as the, you know, the Mercedes sedan that just works and is lovely and comfortable and gets you where you need to go, like Snowflake compared to the F1 car, which is really cool, but needs 40 people just to start it up, right? And that's the, um, the data integration, data productivity layer, and now AI productivity layer, that's exactly what Matillion tries to do as well. And I think Jeremy's just so eloquently explained that, you know, perhaps laborious work, which can be fun if you're an engineer or an enthusiast, but if what you're focused on is optimizing your fleet of logistics, tractors and trailers and making your business more money as productively and quickly as possible, we kind of want to get that stuff out of the way. I think that's what Snowflake wants to do. That's certainly what Matillion has always been focused on. I think, Jeremy, you just brought it to life so beautifully, my friend, so thank you. Thank you. So, how is AI going to change this, generative AI specifically? What kind of new use cases are you finding and, and envisioning with customers? Yeah, so, I mean, uh, we've both, Dave, been around for a few of these mega trends. Right. Um, you know, part of the trick is figuring out if it is one. Um, this one definitely is. Um, the world is changing at pace. Every aspect of how we will live and play is going to be changed, we hope, for the better by generative AI, but, but coming back to our world, um, there's maybe two levels to answer the question out, what are customers doing and then what are we doing as a technology vendor? Yeah, from a customer point of view, I like to think of it, we may have even discussed this last year, uh, that you know, there's an adoption curve that we go through in our mind as CEOs of, of companies like Jeremy's, of CIOs, chief data officers, you know, this time a year ago, it was maybe at the interest or denial stage. It then goes through the curiosity and existential fear stage. Then there's the excitement and action stage. And it feels to me like we're somewhere between excitement and action right now with customers just starting to lay down their first generative AI use cases. And we've seen those at early pioneer customers, even internally at Matillion, where we've been building out gen AI use cases to improve our own business. And the effects can be profound. You know, the amount of time that you can take out of business processes, the improved customer service that you can offer. Most of what we've seen has really been augmenting the power of humans, by the way. It hasn't been replacing them. It's been making them go faster and be better informed. And, and once again, Rebecca, you know, cutting out some of that manual work that we all do in life, right? On the platform side, there's been two big areas that we've been focusing on. So first of all, we've been focusing on using generative AI to make Matillion's data productivity cloud even better at what it's always done. So it's a data productivity platform 
it, it helps Jeremy and his team go faster at, at bringing together API data to uh, drive business insight. We want to use generative AI to get better at that. And so uh, we've built a co-pilot into our software so you can just ask for the pipeline to be built. It will now also document what your pipeline does and so other people can figure it out later and that's part of why Matillion pipelines are 70% uh, requires 70% less time to maintain over time than other ways of building pipelines. Sorry, what percent? So, um, Matillion customers typically spend 70% less. 70? Yeah, it's huge. I thought I heard yeah, yeah. 17. 70. So, 60% okay. yeah. faster to build a pipeline in the first place. 70% less time maintaining it over time. Thank you. That adds up to a 270% ROI using Matillion to build data pipelines historically. Uh, we'll get that better over time as well, but you know, 3x is pretty good. Um, um, so the, the real exciting stuff perhaps is, you know, if you think about this thesis that the world's always needed more data but can't get it because we don't have enough data engineers, well, that's true, but more urgent and more pronounced for generative AI. It's more urgent because generative AI is so disruptive. We can completely revolutionize our business with it. So if we don't, and our competitors do, that is a real problem. And, and we have less ability to do anything about it because there are even fewer engineers in the world that know how to build out Gen AI pipelines. So um, over the last 12 months since we last met, what we've been doing is quickly imbuing the data productivity cloud with the capability of building generative AI pipelines, RAG pipelines, uh, in the visual composable way for which we've always been famous. So Jeremy's talked through how he can pick from the palette and bring in APIs. Well now you can pick from the palette and bring in data from the hundreds of sources we support already. You can then chunk that data, vectorize that data into the common vector data sources like Pinecone and Postgres et al. You can then uh, prompt into LLMs like Arctic, like OpenAI, uh, or the LLM of your choice. You can take that data and then embellish it into your Snowflake scalar data in the Snowflake warehouse. Or in fact, you can send it onto the destination systems like Salesforce or Zendesk or some internally built system that you're using very quickly using the skills that we all have in our businesses today, kind of common old garden data engineering skills, we can compose these generative AI pipelines. And we think this is a huge need. We're really proud of the progress we've made on it. Really thrilled this week at Snowflake Summit to be announcing the Cortex support and the container services support, which also allow you to bring in those custom large language models if you need to uh, use those as well. That's the direction we're taking it, Dave. Jeremy, for you this just drives more automation into your business, takes away some of that toil that, yeah. that Rebecca was talking about. The things that really excite me about Gen AI, and I'm seeing more of it here, I saw it at you know, Tableau a few years back, um, is that everybody wants to be an analyst, and we talked about that democratization of data. And now, one of the biggest barriers to that is convincing people that hey, you have to understand this data very well to really truly analyze it. Now they're able to ask large language models plain English questions to get stuff out of their data. And then the other thing, I think most engineers have been in the existential dread phase of all this, right? Yeah. Because data <laughs> infrastructure can be really bad. And I think one thing that this is going to drive that's going to make everybody's lives better is AI and Gen AI is not going to work and it's only going to be as good as the data you feed it. And it's going to force these CDOs and CIOs and CTOs to get with their people and say, we have to get this right because there's too much upside to be left on the table if we don't. And it's going to, it's going to help solve that problem for us and get us better data. And then our users are going to be able to get at their data without having to be data experts. Right? And it's that democratization, making things easy for people that aren't really technically skilled because eventually, hey, data's the most single most valuable commodity on this planet. And it's only going to get more valuable. And you're a living, breathing example of it. Well, Jeremy and Matthew, thank you both so much for coming on theCUBE, a really great conversation. Yeah. Thank you for having us, Rebecca. Thank you. Dave. I'm Rebecca Knight for Dave Vellante. Stay tuned for more of theCUBE's live coverage of the Snowflake Data Cloud Summit. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in enterprise tech news and analysis.